Okay, so let's get started with our anemone. I'm going to begin with the actual petals here. Now, when we assemble this, we're going to want these two that are pointed um, at the bottom and middle levels. And then this one that has this little heart shaped little divot here is going to go on top. Uh, but either way, we're going to begin by doing some inking to jazz this piece up a little bit. And I'm going to go with a pink color. And the way I've been doing it, this is a nice little tip from Ron. He actually started using um, some pom-poms. So I ran to, ran to my Joanne store and I got some pom-poms. And I like to just kind of make sure that I don't have too much on there before I get started. And the idea is to just kind of start in the center in circular motions and just work your way out. And as you work your way out, there'll be less and less ink left on your pom-pom. So it's gonna give you a nice little gradient look. Okay, and I've been using a few different types of inks to do this. In this case, I'm using Hampton Art, uh, but I also have some color box pigments for some of the other flowers, depending on the color that I needed. Okay, just kind of working circular motions out to the tips, not all the way, because we want to leave a little bit of that original color there. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so that looks good for that one. Go ahead and dab a little more ink on here. And just rub a little bit off. And again, just start in the center, circular motions, and then continue the circular motions onto one of the petals. And work each petal. Kind of cramping up a little bit here. <laughs> Been doing this for two days now. And of course, if you want less of the ink, apply less pressure. The idea is to just kind of give it a nice gradient look. You don't want there to be a definable edge unless you do. I mean, that's totally up to you. I'm just trying to help you. I'm trying to help you get it the way that I'm getting it in case you want to do it the way that I'm doing it. Okay. So I'm pretty happy with, with that look there. And we'll get our last one done here and then move on to the leafy portions of our flower. And maybe this one will be a little more bold than the others. And now this flower is um, this flower is cupped more than the others, so you may want to actually ink both sides just to kind of keep it pretty uniform, so that it's you know not just super exciting on one side and then bland on the other side. And I may just do that just to kind of keep it consistent. Okay. So that looks pretty good. This little area here, I'm going to work a little more ink in. I'm kind of doing like a half moon or a half circle sort of swipe to kind of Make sure that that gradient looks natural. Okay, so there are our petals. Okay, and at this point we can go ahead and move on to the little leaves that we're going to put on our flower. Okay, and that consists of these pieces here. And I am going to grab my pom pom once again. <clears throat> And for this, I have this almost turquoisey, dark green, bluish color. I don't even know 
they don't label the colors on these, so I apologize that I can't tell you exactly what color this is, but I think you can, let me just show you a couple other blues here so you can get an idea. Uh, I don't have any other blues, I just have this one here, but you see, um, you see the tone there. It's a, it's a lot darker and it contrasts really nicely on the various American Craft green colors. And what I've been doing with this one is I kind of prefer larger areas to work on with this, but I've just been kind of working one edge at a time here. Just trying to create a subtle little gradient on just one side of it. And then maybe just the tip of the other side so that there's a little more ink on one side, less ink on the other so that there's this gradient effect, but then also, let's see if we can kind of concentrate our efforts just along the edge of the other side. Okay, so it's very subtle, but you can see the type of effect that you get there, and I really like that. So again, I'm just gonna dab some ink, and sometimes I, I dab too much, and I just wanna kinda of get some of it off because I don't want it to be really heavy. Okay, so again, just really quick motions. With this, I'm going pretty light. I'm not pushing down very hard because I, I noticed that if I do, sometimes I do get really intense patches of color, and I don't want that. And I'll work a little bit into the center there, just like that. I'm gonna flip this around and then just try to just kind of work the edge, just like that. Okay, so there's there's the effect that I, I'm kind of looking for. And honestly, I <clears throat> I don't think this is something that, I mean, you can visually just watch me do it and try to replicate it. I think this is kind of one of those muscle memory things where just kind of try and play with it until you get the desired look that you want and you kind of learn as you go you know, what works for you and, um, you know, your hand might not be as spastic as mine is. I play rhythm guitar, so this is kind of, this, this movement is pretty natural for me, but it might not be for you. So whatever, whatever method you decide to use, I'm sure is fine. Okay. So there you go. Kind of like that. And then for these pieces here, what I've been doing is, um, and I don't know, maybe a part of this, a part of my preference for this has to do with photography and how usually light only hits from one direction. I kind of like to just hit one side of each of these so that the other side is a little bit lighter, almost as if you know the light's hitting it from one side as opposed to like inking the whole thing. So um, this was a really small piece, so it's really hard to achieve that with small pieces like that. Um, but I'm, I'm still happy with how, it, how it's coming out. So, and then with this, I am just going to, since it's such a small piece, just kind of run my ink pad, or my, actually in this case, a pom-pom, just along the edge of the entire thing. Um, this piece is gonna be pretty hidden away, so I'm not overly concerned with my little lighting technique of inking. Just wanna kinda of add a little bit of interest to it, and maybe, maybe a couple of these will be a little bit darker in some of these areas, and there we go. Okay, so we've got our inking all complete here. And at this point, um, you know, we can actually really go ahead and start assembling our flower. Um, so you wanna go ahead and grab your skewer. Okay, let me make sure I have the right one here. Okay, and you wanna begin by just putting a little bit of floral tape on your stick here, because we're gonna be pushing these pieces, these petals down onto the stick, and it kinda helps to have a little bit floral tape on there already and that's gonna allow for that piece to 
kind of stay on there. There's going to be some, some friction and resistance that will hold it in place for us um, without even putting any glue on. Actually, some of these flowers that I was putting together, especially the first one, um, I didn't even put glue on them. I would not recommend that because you want to make it more permanent, but it just shows that with this on here um, and based on the dimension of this little hole here, when you squeeze it on there, um, there's so much tension that the thing hardly moves, which is good. Okay. Oh, and actually one thing that I forgot to do on these guys here is I do want to ink the edges with a nice little purple. So let me go back to that. Let me get my color box ink here. And I'm just using it straight off of um, the actual applicator here. And I am just going to go and hit the edges with like a downward stroke because I do want some of this ink to bleed onto the surface just slightly, just barely. Okay, and that's just going to make it look a little more interesting. Okay, so I'm going to hit all of these with just a little bit of purple. Okay. So we'll go around and do that to all of the petals. And then we can go ahead and put this flower together. And then, you know, if, if you're finding that it's hard to um, reach some of the little nooks and crannies, get yourself a little pad and use a little pad instead. Whatever it takes to kind of get that ink into those little nooks and crannies. Now, technically, I don't even think you're going to see those little nooks and crannies because they're going to be in the center of the flower. But just kind of showing you that there's more than one way to, to accomplish this. One thing that I, I'm a big believer of is, uh, especially in paper crafts, I mean, there are some rules, but just like life, there's really no manual. And, um, you know, who's to say that you're doing it right or wrong? Whatever works for you, you may discover some new method um, that no one's ever thought of when you come into something with a fresh set of eyes. So don't feel that you have to do things exactly the way that I'm doing them. Um, but, you know, if you're more comfortable just kind of following along, then that's awesome too, because I'm, I'm really happy with my results. So, and I'm actually excited to learn more techniques from you guys. Um, and I'm constantly getting great comments on Facebook as well as YouTube. People telling me, hey Leo, try this or try this. And I love that. I love that. I just wish I had a little more time to try all those things. But, um, but it's, always good to, it's always good to learn and expand your knowledge and make you a, a better paper crafter. Okay, so I'm just kind of hitting this with a little bit of purple, pretty much done here. Okay, and we can go ahead and move on to the actual assembly of this piece. There we go. So you see the difference there. You can see that little hint of purple along the edge and that just makes it really pretty. Okay, so what we're going to do, as I mentioned before, and I do want to begin by um, training these pieces just a little bit so they're not completely flat. Um, this, this flower is going to be a little more cupped. Um, so we do want, you know, we do want to, not too heavily, but more so than the other flowers in this bundle, we do want to train these up and just kind of get them ready for their final floral destination uh, and characteristic here. So I'm just going to go ahead and just get these somewhat trained just to make life, our lives easier. And I've just been kind of taking this and grabbing it like this, putting my thumb over the hole and then inserting the skewer in there. And then I'm kind of twisting the skewer as I'm pushing down with my thumb to kind of pop it on there, okay? That hole, by design, is a little bit smaller than the skewer 
and that is just so that we have great tension. You see how there's no glue on there at all and it's not coming off, okay? But we do want to apply glue in between our layers here, okay? So I am going to just put a few dots of glue around my dowel or skewer, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to repeat that same process. I want to make sure that I'm offsetting this flower so that it's not directly over the other ones. You want the petals to offset, okay? And then you can kind of, once you get them in place, just kind of push them together because we got that glue back there. So we want that to adhere, okay? And again, don't, don't worry too much about the final look just yet. Um, we just want to kind of get the flower built and then we can finesse it and clean it up after the fact here. So we'll get our next layer on. Just going to put a few dabs of glue around the center here. And again, you want to also offset this piece and I'm just kind of wiggling the stick as I'm pushing down with my thumb and now I'm going to go ahead and squeeze all three of these pieces together. Okay. So there we have the beginning of our flower. And again, uh, let me just show you one of my final ones here. You see how that looks. There's going to be, we're going to create some distance between these petals. We're going to do some curling. We're going to do a few things to it to really kind of bring it to life. Okay, but until then, let's get the rest of this put together. And the next two pieces that we want to focus on are these stamen pieces here. Okay, and before we actually put them on there, let's go ahead and just kind of fold these back a little bit. Just kind of train them. Okay, just so that they're easier to work with once we begin our final finessing of the flower. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of bunch this up a little bit to bring these up. Okay. And I want to go ahead and put a little bit of glue right on that flower there so that we can pop our little stamen piece on. And there's two of these stamen pieces. Okay. So again, I'm just kind of pushing with my thumb right over that hole to get that on there. And then I can use two fingers and twisting the Twisting the dowel really helps get it on there without ripping anything, okay? So that's how that's going to look. And you can pull these out a little bit just so that they're not flat up against that paper, okay? And there's another stamen piece that is exactly the same. We're going to pop that on and we are going to offset that one so that it's not right on top of the one that we just put on, okay? So I'm just going to pop these up and pull them in a little bit just so that they're not too much in the way. Okay, we can go ahead and put a couple, couple little drops of glue. You don't need much. Pop that on your thumb and push and kind of spin the skewer until it's through. Okay, and you can use kind of two fingers in a spinning motion to get that down. Now you can see there that mine are not offset. So I'm going to carefully grab maybe three of these stamen. There you go. So what I'm doing here is I just kind of twisted that last one a little bit just to get it offset. Okay. And that looks pretty good to me. I'm happy with that. You probably need to probably would want to offset it a little bit more kind of like how I have here. Uh, it's even more offset. So as you're as you're putting this on, make sure that when you're pushing it in, you have it a little more offset. But this still looks great. Oh, there we go. Okay, so that looks good. Just got that a little more offset, which leaves this stamen piece here. And again, I want to go ahead and curl this up just to kind of get it started. We'll do some more finessing towards the end. Okay, and get a little bit of glue right on this layer here. And pop that flower on just like we did all the other pieces. 
pop that stamen on, I'm sorry. Okay, and then push that down, get that all connected. And you see we're flattening it out as we go. So the reason that I, I wanted you to kind of raise these up a little bit is just so that now when we're doing this, it's a lot easier to get your fingers in there rather than it being completely flat. And these inner stamen pieces, you can bring those, you probably wanna curl those in a little bit more than the outer ones, just to kind of give them a little dimension and a little distance and space so they're not all on top of each other, okay? And again, you can always do this at the tail end once your entire flower is completely assembled, okay? So as far as this one goes, there's only one piece left to put on, and that is, uh, where is it? Okay, so the last piece of the flower is just this little circular cutout, and I have a little mouse pad and a little kitchen towel. This is my texture side. I'm gonna flip that down, and I'm gonna grab a little ball tool, and I'm just gonna push down in the center in a circular motion. I'm gonna add a pretty good bit of pressure and then work my way out to the outside to kind of flatten it out because it if you push from the center, it's gonna crease a little bit. What you're trying to do is create like a little bowl shape, or a little cut, like a, I don't even, don't even know what I would call this. You're just cupping it. I'm trying to equate it to something else in life. But I'll show you here from a side view what it should look like. And hopefully you can see, let's see if I can get it. There you go. You can see that it's kind of just cup shaped. So it's not perfectly flat. Okay, and I didn't actually have my glue gun plugged in, so let me plug that in. And for this last piece, I kind of like to use the glue gun, the hot glue gun. It just kind of stays better. And what you can do, now depending on how much of that dowel or skewer you have left, you may want to just push it up a tad. You don't want, you don't want too much of that. You want a little bit but not too much hanging out there. Okay, so I'll show you here. Probably, probably something like that. Just a little bit of that stick still showing through. We're gonna cover that with some hot melt glue and pop this right on top of it to cap it off and close it and finish up our flower. Okay, so wait for my glue to get nice and hot and we'll do that and then I'll show you here. Um, while the hot glue is warming up, we're gonna be putting this piece on here. And I want, I'm gonna, I want the texture side showing. It's gonna be sitting like this because we're gonna curl these leaves up or down in this case. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and train these like so. Okay, and feel free to add some variation in these. Not all of them have to be pointing down. Maybe this one is pointing off to the side a little bit. Okay, just to kind of make it interesting. Like if you think about, um, you know, these little pieces on like a strawberry, you'll notice that they're just all over the place and very random. Um, so that's kind of the look that I'm going for. And my hot glue gun just got warmed up nice and quick. So let me go back to this. And what I've been doing is I'm just putting some hot melt right on that tip and then just kind of twisting it around to get it um, around just the outside of the, the tip of that. And actually this isn't as hot as I wanted it because it's kind of creating those little stringy things that are annoying, but it will hold. So we're just gonna push that down. Hopefully you can see that. Got a little button there, and that covers up the dowel, or the skewer, whatever you want to call it. All right, let's flip this guy over, and I'm gonna grab my hot glue, and I'm gonna put some glue right around there. And this is really gonna keep this thing in place too, so that's kind of why I'm using the hot glue there. And we're gonna slide this right over, right through, okay, and just gonna twist as I push it up. 
And actually, I have something weird at the bottom of this skewer. I don't think this was the skewer I was supposed to use. And it's kind of giving me a hard time. There we go. Okay. And just pop that up. And just push. Get that glue in there nicely. And then you can flare these down and out a little bit so we can see the nice texture there. Okay. So that's the flower. Again, we're still not totally done finessing this. I just want to get the actual leaves on this first. Before we do that, um, we're going to start with this piece here. Okay. I'm going to grab a dowel and I'm going to roll it around my dowel just to kind of get it trained and ready to be sort of round because it was flat. And I'm going to take and curl these back, get them out of the way just a little bit. Okay, just like that. And now if you want, if, if you're more comfortable, and if you want to take some scotch tape and tape this to where you want it, okay, when you position this, you kind of want these to not be completely touching the flower. Maybe one of them can just kind of barely touch this other leafy portion, but leave it at about that height, okay? Now, before I can do that though, I need to put some more floral tape down because I didn't, I didn't go down very far, nor should you have to. You kind of add this as necessary. Don't forget to stretch it out to get that sticky revealed. Okay, so we'll cut that off for now. And let's see, where do we want that? We want that right about there. And it also helps to have that floral tape there because it kind of holds this thing in place for you more easily if, you, if you're not using the scotch tape to hold it down. Okay, so there you go. And let me scoot it back up a little bit. There we go. That's pretty much where I want it. Okay. All right. All right, now let's take a look at our leaves. We have three of them. And they're all gonna be um, kind of bending like this. So I want my texture side and all the nice work that I did with the um, inking, I want, I want people to see that. So I am going to train it this way, okay? And I'm actually gonna use a larger dowel to do that so that I don't inadvertently crease the paper. And then with a smaller dowel, go ahead and curl some of these leaves in opposite directions and maybe curl the tip up a little bit, curl that back, curl that around that way, just to kind of make this leaf more interesting, okay? Okay, so our first leaf, um, what we wanna do is kind of figure out where we want it. And I'm gonna say that about here is a pretty good height. As you can see, relative to the flower, that's a pretty good height there. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my floral tape and I'm just gonna begin wrapping it. There we go. And then once you have it on there, you can bend it down and you have, you have your first little leaf on there, okay? And then the next one here, I'll show you the one that I finished earlier. Um, you can see that they're just kind of staggered a little bit. So just adjust the heights a little bit. Um, visualize how you want it. And actually, let's get these trained first before we move on. Using a 3 8 inch dowel to train these so that we don't get any unsightly creasing in our paper. And grab a bit of a larger, or a, I'm sorry, a thinner dowel to do my training of these little individual pieces. And you know what, this one, I'm gonna just curl like that. So just have fun with it and make it super random. And let's figure out where we want this one here. I think that probably about here looks pretty darn good. So let's kind of wrap it 
wrap the base of this and just push it against the skewer just to kind of make that bottom part a little round so that it's easier to tape with our floral tape. Okay, just overlap it a tiny little bit and we'll start working your tape down. Make sure you're stretching it out. There we go. And let's get our last one in place here. Okay, so we've got this one here, this one here. I'm gonna put this one about at this angle here, right about that height. And actually I'm gonna offset it a little more. I don't want them, I don't want them fighting for sunlight. Okay, so that looks good to me. So that is pretty much it for the assembly of this flower. Now the only thing left to do is just to kind of finesse this thing a little bit and um, cup this flower even more. Okay, so there's our flower. Looks really nice. And I'm gonna grab a nice thick dowel and I am going to, I'm gonna go ahead and train these leaves. I'm gonna kind of push them in and then pull up. Okay, so push the push the pedal in over the dowel and then add some tension and curl it up by training it. Okay, because we want this kind of, this, this flower should be pretty cupped once we're done with it. Okay, so like that. So I'm pushing it in first and then I'm pushing, uh, I'm actually applying force with my finger against the dowel and then running the pedal against the dowel to kind of train that paper and say, hey paper, I want you to, I want you to go this way. Okay, so you can see the difference there. And then you can take and if you need to, kind of squeeze this together even more. Okay, just train it until you get a nice cupped look. Okay, and also one other thing to, to add some interest to this, I'm gonna grab a, a skewer and I wanna go ahead and just kind of grab some of these petals like this one here. I'm gonna wrap it backwards onto my stick to kind of flare that petal back. This one might come forward at an angle. This one might go back. Um, this one, maybe just on the side, I may curl it in. Okay, this one here, I'm gonna just curl back. And then maybe just on that same one, curl one side in. Okay, so we're just kind of trying to create some randomness um, on this flower, just to kind of make it lifelike. Okay, so there we go. And there is your anemone. And if you want, like I said, you can go ahead and bring these up a little bit just to kind of give them some more life. These inner stamen, maybe bring them in more than the outer ones. Uh, whatever you want to do to make it your own, feel free. But again, just make sure that the end result uh, looks like, you know, it's a nice cupped flower so you can see the, the two different variations there. Stay on top of all things Dreaming Tree and engage with us today. Get the latest news and enter in our giveaways on Facebook. Get inspired by following us on Pinterest. Be the first to see our new product launches on Instagram. Do you prefer Twitter? Yep, we're there too. Watch our beautiful product trailers and assembly tutorials on YouTube. For more information, visit www.3dsvg.com. Live, craft, love, and dream.